In this video, I'm going to talk about inverse trig identities. So, the same way trig functions have trig identities to simplify the, the problems, inverse trig functions have inverse trig identities that are meant for the same function. There are three basic inverse trig identities I'm going to talk about, and they come from the inverse cofunction identities theorem. It's actually really easy to memorize these identities because they follow the same pattern. So if you know one, you should be able to figure out the, the other two. The first identity states that the inverse sine of x plus the inverse cosine of x or arc cosine and arc sine are equal to pi over 2. So whenever you have, for the case of sine inverse sine of x, you can convert that into the pi over 2 minus the inverse cosine of x. And the same goes to the cosine. If you have the inverse cosine, you can convert that into pi over 2 minus the inverse sine. So that is our first inverse trig identity. The second one states that the inverse tangent of x plus the inverse cotangent of x is equal to pi over 2. So it's the same as, as the one above, the same result. Same procedure, the inverse sine, the inverse tangent of x is going to be equal to pi over 2 minus cotangent, the inverse cotangent of x. The inverse cotangent of x is going to be equal to pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of x. And that is our second inverse trig identity. And the final one, the inverse secant of x plus the inverse cosecant of x is going to be equal to pi over 2. So they are all equal to pi over 2. And that's why I said it's pretty easy to memorize them. As long as you know one, you can figure out the other two. Like before, the inverse secant of x is going to be equal to pi over 2 minus the inverse cosecant of x. And then the inverse cosecant of x is going to be equal to pi over 2 minus the inverse secant of x. So it's all repetition. Really easy way to figure them out. You write a function, let's say sine or inverse sine in this case. You add co to it and add it up, cosine, inverse cosine of x, and they are all equal to pi over 2. Do the same for the tangent. You add co cotangent. And you can see that the same goes for secant and cosecant. And finally, this can be useful when you have many different inverse functions in it. So if you have the inverse sine and the inverse cosine, and you just want to get one of them, or you have like four different fun inverse functions, you just convert them into pi over 2, and they should make the problem simpler. And that's all there is really to say about inverse trig identities. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it and found it useful. And if you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more videos.